Hey guys, in this video we are going to test two BMS from Heltec BMS company. This is 12 volts version 4S 330 amps and this is 16 cells version 120 amps. Price for this BMS is $70. It doesn't have temperature sensors, either Bluetooth control. Price for this BMS is $45 and also doesn't have temperature sensors or Bluetooth module. So for two of these BMS, we're going to test low and high voltage disconnect. And as well, we're going to check if it can push through amperage that it's claiming for. I might not be able to draw 330 amps, but I will try to test as much amperage as I can for this BMS. For test equipment, I'm going to use this battery. This is 560 amp hours battery. And uh, this BMS is not going to participate in test. I have direct access to cell negative and each battery positive right here. So we're going to connect this BMS to battery right there. Then we have Victron shunt where we can check amperage, what amperage we're going to draw. And right here is a energy inverter, 3 kilowatts version that we're going to use on the load side. Now let me connect this BMS and we'll test what is the low and high voltage disconnect. I'm going to connect this light bulb to BMS and the battery. And I'm going to discharge cell number one and we'll see at what voltage it will cut off uh, power. Now for high voltage disconnect, I have two chargers. One charger I will apply for entire battery and the second charger I will overcharge just one cell to get quick results. We'll see what is the cutoff voltage. All right, now let's move to charge and discharge test. We'll see if this BMS can handle amperage. I have these wires connected to two sides of these bus bars to give um, maximum contact point to transfer power. What we have here is a battery. B negative is going into Victron shunt. And then we have, we are going to BMS and BMS going to energy inverter. So now I'm going to plug inverter and we'll charge battery for 10 minutes with uh, 100 amps or as close as I can get to 100 amps and we will see what is the temperature of BMS. If BMS is going to be cold, we'll stop test or if BMS is going to heat up, we'll continue test and we'll see what is the temperature is going to be later in like 20, 30 minutes. All right, so now let me connect all of this together and uh, we'll start test. So let's see 10 minutes later what's the temperature for BMS. So actually at this point 95 amps, this BMS handling perfectly, it's not heating up at all. So now let's go to discharge test. All right, so here's the result after 10 minutes. So BMS temperature is 137 Fahrenheit. We still draw 280 amps and uh, I'm gonna stop test at this point. All right, now let's test 16S BMS. Right here I soldered these wires. So it's not best soldering job, but it's good enough for our test. And connected to a small battery bank, we're gonna test low and high voltage disconnect. So first I'm going to connect this battery to this inverter. And I'm going to discharge cell number eight. We'll see when it's going to disconnect battery. So now high voltage test. Alright, so here is the setup for charge and discharge test. So this BMS right now connected to a bigger battery bank, 23 kilowatt hours battery bank. Balancing lead still connected to the small battery just because I don't want to reconnect them to bigger battery. And um, so B negative is going into smart shunt, then it's going to these stats and then it's going into the battery bank. On a load side on a P negative is going into this wire and this wire is going into my solar unit. So we first is going to do a discharge test and we'll see how this is handling. All right, so we're draining from uh, battery 
115 amps right here and BMS temperature All right, so it's past 10 minutes, but BMS at this point is extremely hot. And I don't think it's gonna work for a long time with 170 plus Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to stop this test and we'll do charge test. And here we are about 10 minutes later with the charge test. We're still charging with 60 amps and um, at this time temperature is just like 95 Fahrenheit, somewhere close there. So with the 60 amps charging, this BMS doesn't have any problems to charge to charge battery with this amperage. So it's staying relatively cool. All right, so here's a quick summary about these two BMS units. For 4S version, we tested that low voltage disconnect is a 2.1 volts, high voltage disconnect is a 3.9 volts, which is too high for lithium iron phosphate battery. We did charge test with 95% of rated capacity with 95 amps and temperature was 70 Fahrenheit, which is a pretty nice result. For this charge test, however, we pushed 85% of this capacity and uh, we run test with 280 amps and temperature was 138 Fahrenheit. It's a little bit too high. I feel like if you want to use this BMS, especially in a closed enclosure, or you want to mount this to the battery, you will need to derate this BMS by maybe another 10%. For 16S uh, BMS for 48 volts version, low voltage disconnect was 2.18 volts, high voltage disconnect was 3.78 volts, and we did the charge test with 100% of this capacity with 60 amps and temperature was 95 Fahrenheit, which is still acceptable. However, for this charge test, we did 95% of BMS capacity with 115 amps and temperature was 172, which is really high temperature for BMS. Even MOSFETs rated for higher temperature, still you, you cannot use this BMS anywhere close to the battery with this kind of temperature. If you want to use this BMS daily, you might want to derate this BMS by 35% and use only 80% as a maximum discharge current for this BMS. So what is the good about this BMS is of course price. It's a relatively inexpensive BMS for such amperage, especially for S version if, you, if you're going to derate this. And uh, on the other side, it doesn't have any temperature controls or Bluetooth connection where you can monitor status of your cells or do any configuration. I think that's it about this review. I'm really curious to hear your opinion about this BMS. And uh, as always, thank you for watching and see you later.